Okay, and here we are down to what may be the final turn of the game. Green pulled in a huge amount of money, 20 bucks, including their die roll. They built up enough that they can launch an attack on blue here. Uh, essentially what they're looking at is, okay, this is a double guy, and I can get him to here. That's not close enough. Uh, I thought this was the mothership briefly, and I'm just not quite close enough. But I'll let it stand because I've made mistakes beyond that. So what I'll be able to do is get these two around the back here. Again, I thought this was the mothership and I'd have more shots. So these guys can only do three each. That's six. Uh, and then I built two more, wait, three more simple F-1-3s. Uh, that brings me to 15 points. So conceivably, I still have enough damage I can do. I cannot attack with the, my mothership because it's one space here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It wouldn't even be able to reach what I was briefly thinking was the mothership because, hey, the iconography, it's hard for me to tell things like that. When something's that key, it's tough to tell. And with cubes on top, hey, I don't know. Anyway, easy mistake to make. Again, the presentation layer of the game doesn't work terribly well for me. Uh, but I did spend eight points on something that will help tremendously, which was an advanced system card. Hey, I can play... Oh, no, only if I'm being attacked. This allows me to shift away. I thought I could get the extra movement and slip in. So I'm going to have an unlikely chance of hitting that. That's going to open it up so that red has a very good chance to win. So now the question is, okay, I built lots and lots of ships. Can I do red in and give blue a chance to protect to build up their protection that's that's really the only option at this point is knocking red out so i'll see if i can do that and actually if i can i might be able one two three four no nope. i was thinking i might be able to get a flag into play but i don't think i'll be able to do that so i'll see what i can do with green to recoup from the situation of me not being able to see what was going on because of the the, uh, the particular design structure. But one of the key factors to all this, Red has been holding this aggressive warping for a long time. They're gonna jump Green out of the play. Um, one, two, three, four. Green can't quite get their big heavy. Oh, they don't have a heavy there. They have a heavy here though. One, two, three. They can get that in range. So I'm gonna jump this ship, this ship, and geez. I can't get rid of all these bandits. I'm going to get rid of... Ooh, we got another double ship here. This one, I'm allowed to jump three of their ships, and I'm going to throw them way back here into this realm. That's going to make life even harder on them. Oh, this was only a, a minor fighter. It's hard for me to tell these apart, too. Again, the iconography for this is kind of disturbing to me. Uh, but, well, we'll do that. And that gets rid of those. And that puts Green in this troubling position where they may not have enough firepower to take Red down. They may not have enough to take Blue down. We'll see. I'm also not the least bit sure whether or not I counted this Green die as being a Green ship uh, again. That's a weird rule. I've got my gripes about it. My own solution as dictated by the rules, hey, find your own way of hate representing this, it doesn't work terribly well for me either. So, eh, I have a hard time remembering things. It wouldn't be anywhere near as hard in a, in a, to deal with that kind of situation in a, in a real live game because I wouldn't be taking the breaks that I do. But what we can see is green's going to go for an all-out attack as much as they can. They've got only four light ships, and uh-oh, I forgot to move this. I think I want to. One, two, three. It's getting me closer to the blue one, among other things, but it, I'm in range of the red one, and I've got the money that I picked up from scavenging to be able to take a long-range shot. So what could I possibly get here? Well, I've got four three-point hits, potentially. That's 12 points, and a seven, that's 19. That's not going to do it, but I do have shots at this. It's still not going to get me 20 points, so I may end up reallocating what my damage is, because what I really needed to do is wipe red off the board. If I can't wipe them off the board then what I need to do is take away their ec economic ability. Um, so, well, we'll see where we land, and we'll see what kind of damage we can do, but we may end up 
allocating different attacks. I've also gone and grabbed myself two of these. That's not enough to win me it. Uh, and they've got to make their way back to the base, which there probably isn't time for. And I've got another one here, again, picking that up. Like, probably not time. And the net result of the green attacks did not do much to red at all. These are, I think, worth two each. That's what they're meant to represent. Whether or not that's what it is, yeah. Four. Oh, the yellows are worth three, and I haven't been using them. Jeez. I didn't imagine it would be that tightly packed. One, two, three. Okay, great. So I can replace these guys with these, which probably gets rid of some of the countermix issue because I was seeing uh, problems with there not being enough blues or something. Uh, not that I'll ever remember this because it's completely different color than I've been using. Uh, this color-coded without numbers is just silly, I think. Uh, okay, well, but what did I do? I managed to wreck one ship. I think this is a, yeah, this is a harvester. I did some damage to another harvester somewhere. I was hoping to do more damage. Uh, ended up firing both of these on here because I couldn't destroy this because I was going for that. But it's what I can do. Now Red's got a real shot at winning because they've got this warp point card. They can pull these heavy ships into play against that. They sh can't move this except maybe to here. But they're within range that they can hit the blue ship with it. So as long as they have some economic production, and they do, they have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I think this is theirs, 12, I guess, I don't know. So they're going to have enough money to be able to not only fire their weapon, but also have a pretty good chance of taking that blue ship out. And that means yellow probably fired too much damage into it. Mm, one of those, hey, I want to go back and fix something. Uh, combat was the last thing that I was doing. And I noticed, gee, I've got this card, this detonator card. Play this card while attacking, destroy an enemy ship. Well, I want to do that. I'm going to wreck this thing. Uh, just to take it out of red, uh, Red's hands so that they have a somewhat less of a chance. Total income for Red, well, they ended up with 20 bucks. They had a couple bucks left over after they summed up everything they had in a big die roll off here. So they should have enough to do this in. Yeah, yeah, I started that before I did it. I know that's cheating, but you know, uh, when I solo things, I often want to make up my mistakes just because I, I can't. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but when it's easy to do so like that, I definitely want to, especially when the game's at stake. All right, let us see whether Red can launch a successful attack. They only need to do nine hits. They should be able to come up with that easily because that blue ship is kind of out here. It's got three spaces where single ships can hit it. And then I've got, well, I've only got one double ship and the big boy. Now, without using my special warp card, I would have probably been able to do this anyway, but that allowed me to do something a little different. So I bought myself one of these bandits, which I'm planning on capturing this with, because I'm gonna open things up with that warp card and jump a light ship into somewhere, I don't know, wherever the furthest is. And I can also jump this heavy ship into play somewhere push it back here that's not really too difficult that gives me room to throw another ships one two three four five these guys have a movement of eight uh, I'm out of money that's a worry I can't move this but one two three four five six I'm in range I need to come up with some money though now, luckily for me, I still have this scavenger here. Nobody wiped it out. And I can do a quick... Okay, there was a destroyed ship somewhere. There we go. Uh, this flies up here. I have one more jump. I've only used two of them so far. Is there another ship I wanted to jump out of location? No, so I'm okay. So I used this card up. Okay, so now for this, if this is going to gather me the cash to be able to do my attack. One, two, three, four. And I've captured all of these for cash. And that's two, six. That was a biggie. Seven bucks that I get in uh, reserve cash, which I'll take from here over with the money. 
and seven bucks means that I have four that I can use to launch my attacks. I'll roll out those attacks and I'll come back in a moment with them. Ah, oh, what the heck, I got lots of video here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna open up by attacking with the bandit because if I get a good roll there, I get an extra, an extra die. I'm back on a tether again. So I roll, my red is a success, so I've captured it because he didn't get a one, which is the only thing that can block it. And I replace this with this. Now, what's that gonna mean? Well, I wanna launch my attacks. Let's start launching my one point attacks. Now I have no way to mark this guy did something. I gotta try to remember that, which isn't too hard early in the game, but as you start getting more and more ships on the board, it gets to be kind of painful. Here, I can work kind of in order, but there's no requirement that you do so. So I'll open up with this guy. He's a light ship. Oh. See, he's got this. He can remove damage at any time. That's something that Red does not know about. So this is probably actually not the end of the game. So I'll roll out the attacks and I'll come back because I don't want to waste uh, a whole video on a lot of die rolling. Of course, the hard question is this. Do I want to allow... Do I want Red to have the additional information that he's not going to win? That's the hard call here, right? Uh, I would rather him not have that information because he might target my blue ships because he's in range here, as is green perhaps, to be able to be hit. Green is perhaps the most likely, although I've already got four hits on red, that makes it more likely, but there's a lot of crap blocking red from being attacked easily. So, I would rather make red think that he's still got a chance here. He's fired his first two ships. He's got some damage. He's up to, uh, I guess that's 14. He needs six more. That's very likely at this point. I'm going to spring that 10 points after he expends more of his firepower. Well, that's been expended, and I still have two heavy ships left. There's, that looks like 10 points on him. Five, four is nine, and blue is 10. I got rid of the one 10, but so... With two of these, they could actually still wipe it out, so I'm going to keep rolling. And I've still got the mothership. I've seen some uh, big defense rolls, though. Okay, that's a low hit. That's going to be three. i got to figure out what a three is. I, they're not green, are they? It's here. Oh, no. This is yellow, so he's actually down one from where he was. I'm sorry. These stupid colors confuse me. So I should be at nine. That's red is four five, yellow and blue, and now I just did three. So three means yellow. And now I've got to add and see what I've got. I've got six, 11, 12. Now six and five means 10 and one, so I get a black and a blue, but there's twos in here. Twos are green. You know, trying to keep track of this so that I can understand what the numbers are because they're colors, not numbers, and they don't make sense. You don't add colors under our normal mathematical uh, systems. Okay, so I'm at 12. I've got one more big guy left to fire. He's got a, a, no chance of wiping him out, but then I've got the mothership, which does. Okay, that was blocked because of a one. So now I spend four bucks to see or no? No, I'm at 12. The most I can do is seven. I can't wipe him out. I don't want to fire that there. Where do I want to fire it? Good question. Ah, <laughs> oh, I definitely need to fire it. It's just what at? Six. I'm going to try to hit this big green guy there. If I can knock that out, that's worth more than four. And I do. I get a full hit. That's seven hits on this thing. That breaks it. So we failed to get the victory here. And that means blue gets a shot. Well, what does blue want to do? Blue wants to go for the win, too. And they've got to decide, can I take out green with... Uh, red with its two green things. Uh, green plus green equals what? Yellow plus blue or something like that, right? Uh, <laughs> I really wish they had given numbers on this. This is, 
you know, maybe if you're really, really familiar with the game, it's not an issue, but I'm sure if you sent it out with these components on a blind test, somebody would have said, hey, you don't do this. Give, them, give me numbers. <laughs> Get rid of these stupid wooden blocks, you know, just some chits. That'll be cheap enough. All right. So, of course, wooden blocks are probably easier to package up late in the process, even if they cost more. So there may have been an issue like that, but... Um, so we're up blue, and blue has to make a decision of where they're going to go and who they're going to attack. Red's got more hits on them. That's an advantage. Green has their own issue, though, where they're more easily approachable. Yeah, although maybe not so much for blue. That's far away, isn't it? Yeah, I can probably get three ships on them there easily enough. And then there's also the option of, hey, can I get this there? One, two, three, four. Not quite, unless I can get rid of this ship before movement. Right? Because if this wasn't here, no, it would have to be, I would have to uh, send a scavenger then to pick it up. But if this were not here, so maybe an eight bucks for a card in the hopes that I can destroy a ship, man, that card's gone. Who knows what else is in there. Uh, I don't like studying the cards beforehand, but that means I don't have the knowledge to be able to make this decision fully. Uh, so, as far as I can see, Unless I've got something magical, I think I'm probably going to be trying to target either green or, or, or red there. Blue's economic potential has gone down the drain. So I'm going for the last flag instead. Now, I'm getting it within two, which means next turn there's a fair chance that I can maybe get it into play. Hard to tell because I'm kind of bottled in here. But maybe I can, uh, if I can hold this space, I can clear that out and make room for that guy to come in. That's assuming I survive. I bought, all, I spent all my money repairing myself. I'm down to a yellow, whatever that means, three or something like that. And uh, I'm hoping that I can make it through. I don't think yellow has enough firepower to do 17 points on me. A red probably does. So I've swung everything into place to attack red. Now the question is, does yellow do what they did last time and try to plink me in the hopes of sneaking into a win uh, that way because somebody else fails on their rolls? We'll see. Yellow's play was kind of mixed here, maybe not the most clever. They took their money, they built themselves a bandit or whatever, and a harvester looking at making more money for next turn at this late stage in the game. Why? Well. They were hoping to actually capture this thing so that they would get a flag, be in a position that maybe next turn they'd be able to take blue out and win it. I think that's pretty unlikely given that they go directly after blue, so blue has a right to repair their ship just before yellow gets to go. Uh, but they also set up with some thoughts of shooting up some of the red stuff. They didn't actually do that. Instead, they uh, tried to capture this, failed, fired on it, uh, damaged it, and then fired on the main blue ship to try to attract more fire towards it from red. I'm not sure how wise that is, really. It already was sitting on three points of damage. They only did one additional, but the other option was to plink at a red ship without being able to destroy it at all. Uh, maybe they're hoping red will take a low, a low risk, but low chance of success attack. I don't know. All right, well, that's the end of the round, and we're back around to green. You'll notice one thing, I've put the 12-sided dice away. They're no longer necessary. They just place the flags. Well, now I'm looking at green's position. They have this fleet notice card. That's not going to help them at all. They also have a lot of money after their die roll, some 20-something. They made, like, 20 this turn. But here's what they have. They have two and a third. Can they get them all? One, two, three, four. They're not going to be able to get this guy here. They could actually have gotten him uh, one, two, three, four to a position where he'd be adjacent, but he doesn't have that then. But they're going to go for, rather than trying to destroy someone, positioning themselves so that they get the win if nobody does anything. Because the way they look at it, they're not going to be able to do 16 points of damage to red easily, and that doesn't give them the win well, it would with this other stuff coming up. 
So, well, let's we'll see if they can if they can manage to hit anyone. Blue is the hardest one to hit. So if they can wreck red's position well enough, they should be able to hold out as long as no one can pull a win off. A part of their problem that they're sitting with, I just spent 16 bucks. I got eight more left. I could have bought another one. That would have given me three of these heavies. Three heavies uh, would do nine points, right? Plus whatever this is, two greens, that's four. Uh, brings me to 13. One solid hit with the, uh, with the main ship. And I could conceivably wipe right out. Uh, I also have a light ship that I could pull up to here. But that's all I can build. I can only build two of these, not three. And I can't get a third one into play. I've got one here, and one's damaged here. I don't have any more double ships. Oh, but I have all these surrounding them. I didn't realize those were mine. Yeah, I should go for the attack on red. Even though red's two cubes doesn't give me the win automatically, I can get one of these cubes up to my ship. So yeah, I'm going to go for that attack on red. And I don't think anybody can do anything. Nobody's got an advanced system card left. So now as green's been firing there at the decision point, they've fired all these ships. They've fired all their uh, uh, bandits uh, to try to see if they could capture something nearby that could help them wipe something out. Just to help them gain some advantage of some sort or another. All they've got left is this ship, which isn't going to be able to fire on the mothership and their mothership. Now, point-wise, gee, I don't know. I've got some number, some colors here. Uh, let's see, that comes out to 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. I need to do 8 points. I cannot do that. So I will not waste the money on an attack from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from back here. I could perhaps spend the money to hit something else. That might be of some value. I'm not sure what I want to hit. Maybe this, uh... Uh, bandit here because those are kind of risky ships. I think it's worth the four bucks to try to knock it out. I've got a pretty good chance of doing so. And then this guy's probably just going to knock out the yellow. Uh, it's the only thing he can shoot at the yellow uh, harvester. But I failed with green. Looked like a good chance. Didn't come out. Red's done a combination of things. The main thing is they've lined themselves up for an attack on blue. Now, if they kill blue, they win. That's four. Uh, flags, they only need three to win. They could also have won with green, but they were in already positioned with a couple of pieces here. They grabbed the money for it with the scavenger. Uh, they built themselves one more big warship. They didn't have any more they could build. Uh, I thought I converted one, but it must have been just a light warship. There's no other room that they can get around here. They were considering trying to uh, use a scav... Uh, uh, whatever the hell they're called, barbarian bandit, uh, to get into place somewhere. But what they did do, they bought off some of their damage on their mothership. They bought off damage on this thing too. Uh, it was probably a waste. They probably should have bought more off the mothership. Got themselves to four bucks. They got one shot on here. One, two, three, four, five. They're in range and positioned it so that they've got a lot of screens around it with those harvesters so that light ships can't attack them. That's the reason for the harvesters being there. And even if they're destroyed, it probably means light ships can't attack them. Although if they're destroyed, someone else can send a scavenger through, pass through. Of course, here I didn't have enough range to pass through. Uh, and then open up room for another ship to come in. So there's kind of this tricky maneuvering uh, calculations that are constantly going on. All right, let's see if the dice go well for red, because that's really what it comes down to now. Can you out dice your opponent? And they're taking on the guy who goes next, so he's got a chance to uh, repair the same way that green took red on, giving him a chance to repair. I think that's a clever move. Right now it's looking pretty good for red. They've got uh, a black, a green, and two yellows. That turns out it adds up to 18, I think. And while I'm doing all that calculation, of course, it makes it easier to forget which ships I've fired. The other factor that kind of the components get in the way of a lot, along with not being necessarily easy to tell these apart. Yes, they look pretty different, but in a quick glance, they don't. So I think I've fired all of these. I still got one big ship and my mother ship left. And like I counted, 10, 
16, 17, 18. This is a pretty good chance. There's a good chance this will wipe it out. If I don't roll a one on the blue die, the game is over. And I do not. I did five more points of damage because that's a heavy ship that can roll two spaces. Uh, I think this is here. And that's the game. All these come over to red. There's no chance for any catch-up or anything like that. Is there a lot to say about rap? I don't have a lot of time left on this video. I think I'm going to go into a lot of those aspects on, uh, on, on the review. But I do want to say, the multiplayer aspect seems to make up for whatever advantage there is to that first player. The first player has the advantage of being able to shoot down uh, the first player has the advantage to get the drop on someone else, the draw, to get that first shot in. But I think that other players could kind of shy away from him and let him gather a lot of space and then slip through him because there are no, there's nothing like a zone of control in this game. Even your own units don't provide a, a barrier of any sort. Somebody else can fly right by you or through you. So you can't really define a territory, which is what I initially tried doing and thought I was doing. Um, so I'm not sure how big a deal uh, whatever that first shot drop is because you can stay away from them. And then if they move too close to you, you get the first drop on them. It does, uh, it does mean, though, that you're giving up a lot of the meaty territory until you choose to get close enough to engage, at which point they get the first drop, right? <laughs> of course, by that point, you might have enough, uh, enough, enough buildup. Uh, in two players, I think this would be a serious, serious problem. And haven't played it that way, but that's my guess. All right, I'll load this one up, and I'll come back with a full review, which will include the same stuff.